Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Usman, and I'm working as a health data scientist uh, in the University of St. Andrews, UK. Uh, today, I'm going to present uh, inferring structure and parameters of biological pathways uh, using swarm intelligence. So to start, uh, I'll briefly uh, introduce the swarm intelligence that what are these methods and why they are used. So uh, swarm intelligence are nature inspired artificial intelligence uh, algorithms that are based on the collective behavior of decentralization and self-organized. So this means that all the agents involved in swarm intelligence are either are working collectively. Uh, so there is no central control on all the uh, agents involved in a swarm. So generally, uh, as I mentioned, that these swarms are made up of agents which in, uh, inter interact each, each other uh, and the environment. So there is no central control on the structure of the swarm. So we have already seen uh, around us that there are some different types of animals or uh, or animals that they do swarm or birds or insects. But the question is that why they do swarm? So they do swarm to search for the best food. Uh, they do swarm to communicate with each other. They do swarm to forage better. Uh, they do swarm to migrate from one place to another. And they do or they perform swarm to defense against predators. Uh, so here are some of the examples of uh, swarm behaviors by insects or animals. So on the top left, as you can see that this is uh, uh, ants uh, going from nest towards the food source and there is an obstacle uh, in ants and they are trying to avoid this obstacle and try to find a shortest way towards and to go towards the food source. Uh, uh, and we called uh, this algorithm as ant colony optimization. Uh, and another one is a uh, fish swarm uh, uh, at the bottom of this presentation. Uh, so why do fish swarm? They do swarm to, to protect themselves from different pred predators. So if any predators are trying to attack them, uh, they make a confusion matrix to that predators and they escape from that place by making the confusion matrix. And you have already seen that within this swarm, they do not collide with each other. So they keep the distance same between all the fishes and they make a confusion matrix and the predators uh, try to cross this swarm, uh, but didn't like most of the time they are, they are, they are not catching any fish. Uh, so the aims and objectives of uh, this presentation is to search the best structure and parameters simultaneously and to solve the complex real world problem. So now we will try to s apply the formula of swarm intelligence that how we can search the best structure and parameters it's in the same way ants are structuring for uh, ants do swarm as I have uh, shown you in the previous pre uh, slide that they do swarm to search for the best food and to uh, by avoiding the longest route and try to find the shortest path and to solve the complex real world problems. So we will be bringing swarm intelligence, the intelligence of swarm and plugging it to this uh, problem. And the objective would be to that can we use swarm intelligence to infer dynamic system models? Uh, can we modify a traditional swarm intelligence and to make it novel? And can we solve a real world problem uh, using swarm intelligence? Uh, so here, uh, these are the three models or problems we are going to solve uh, using uh, uh, particle swarm optimization. So we will be using particle swarm optimization to search for the structures and parameters simultaneously. So the first one is uh, HIV model. The second one is artificial five, which is a synthetic model. And the last one is uh, Kanakor cancer model, which is a real model. And so there are different uh, uh, pathways uh, intercorrecting, biological pathways are interconnected and 
uh, in these three models. So to briefly tell you about the structures and parameters. So this, and the structures are the variables and uh, the uh, operators involved uh, in a differential equation. And the parameters are the values that are interconnected with these variables. So all these three models are defined by the uh, uh, ordinary uh, differential equation. And we also call these models as uh, dynamic models or dynamic systems because they change with time. And these models or these equations gives you the change of HIV model or the artificial five or synthetic model or the cancer model with time. So the T is the variable and DT is the time change involved uh, in all these equations of a model. So uh, if, uh, as you are seeing on the top left, uh, these are the different agents uh, looking for the best uh, structures and parameters in the whole search space. So this is a PSO and how it works. So it uh, PSO works. Uh, uh, so, uh, if, so it initially samples the uh, agents, uh, the possible structure uh, and parameters uh, in the whole search space. So how we are going to encode the structure and parameters and PSO because we know that we have, uh, we can have possible structures and parameters from the, if I can go back and show you that there here, if you can see that I have plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus V1, V2, V3, and the parameters. So the possibility could be that all I have plus, 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 minus, minus V1 and V2, or plus, minus, minus, plus V1, V2, or V3. So there could be possible solutions to one structure and parameter. So we collect and make all the possible structure and solutions and send them to all in, in the whole search space of PSO, and then it finds the best structure and parameter from that search space. So initially there's the, it's a random sampling done by the PSO, and then they produce new offsprings, which are the best, uh, which are the solutions, uh, and the solutions are the possible structure and parameters, and then they select the best solution by changing the position and velocity. And they, uh, once they are, once they are succeeded in finding the best structure and parameter, they end there. So the question here is that why or how we can bring the PSO novel? Because PSO is based on random sampling, and they can sample the agents or the possible structures and parameters randomly in one corner or in the middle or. Uh, or in the whole search space. So every time when you're trying to sample them, it will sample them randomly. So to cover it or to overcome the random sampling, we introduced a uh, latent hypercube sampling. So in later hypercube sampling, no uh, agent uh, is crossing the row and column of any other particle or any other agent. So if you can see that this particle is standing alone in this row and in this column and similarly here. But another C, but you can also see that in later hypercube sampling, there are some empty spaces like this. So uh, how are we gonna cover this? So for this to overcome this latent hypercube sampling, we introduced uh, latent hypercube sampling multi-dimensional uniformity. So in this, you can see that all the particles or agents are calculating the Euclidean distance from each other so that they can keep the, the distance same. And also they will cover all the time when you're trying to sample the particles by using uh, latent hypercube sampling multi-dimensional uniformity, they will be covering all the search space equally and uniformly. So uh, if you can see here in the results, uh, uh, the blue line shows you the target model and the PSO is the based algorithm. And then we are introducing LHS PSO and LHS MDU PSO, which is latent, hyper, latent hypergib sampling and 
uh, latent hypercube sampling with multi-dimensional uniformity. And we are trying to compare all these three resultant models with the target model. So uh, in all these three graphs, you can see that the resultant model of LHS MDU-PSO is near or is close to the target model. But if what if we have more than 20 or 40 resultant models and how we are going to calculate that which model or which resultant model are better so in that case, we have used uh, a key key information criteria and Bayesian information criteria to select the best resultant models in the, within the resultant model. So the lower the value is, the better, uh, the best is the resultant model. So we have that LHS MDO models are the best as compared to LHS PSO and PSO by using AIC and the same for average BIC. Uh, we have best resultant models of LHS MDO PSO. And the same here for uh, the uh, Kinecore cancer model. So as you can see here that the average AIC uh, is less as com of uh, a average AIC value of LHS MDU PSO is less as compared to LHS and uh, LHS PSO and PSO and the same for Bayesian information criteria. So this means that uh, the resultant models of LHS MDU are performing better to find the possible structure and parameters simultaneously. Uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact me. Any problem in applying machine learning algorithms or artificial intelligence algorithms towards health sciences or digital health or to solve any health or medicine problem using AI or machine learning, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.